The stepfather of Rabe's favorite pharmaceutical lives in the hills behind San Francisco. In the early 60s, Dr. Alexander Shulgin was one of the Dole Chemical Company's top analytical chemists. He turned his skills to making psychoactive drugs. It cost him his job, but turned him into a folk hero to the rave generation. In the mid-1960s, he resynthesized an obscure drug that had been patented but then ignored by the German company E. Merck in 1911. It was called 3,4-methylene-dioxy-N-methylamphetamine, MDMA for short. It would later acquire the street name Ecstasy. To Dr. Shulgin, it was just one of hundreds of mind-altering drugs he concocted and tested on himself and his close friends. Actually, it's about 40 years ago, I started with a drug that is um, an isolate from a cactus called mescaline. And uh, it was a, an eight-hour experience. My curiosity was if such a simple molecule can allow me this type of, of openness, this so-called psychedelic experience, what modifications that molecule will modify, improve, change, redirect that type of introspection? And hence that became my, my um, research search. Ah, magnificent. This is my first effort to make the product, and I have starting material and product left. Today, in his garden shed laboratory, Dr. Shulgin is synthesizing what he hopes will be a brand new psychedelic substance. In the weeks to come, he will try it in larger and larger doses and assess whether or not the trips it will produce are worth taking. I rather suspect it would be um, uh, a visual distortion, maybe color exaggeration, wiggly lines, moving patterns, uh, I would not expect it to rob you of, uh, of awareness of your reality and where you are and, and your relationship with it. And the graph down here the Around 20 years ago, Dr. Shulgin made these careful notes. The first recorded experience on ecstasy. This is, this is one of the early studies on, on MDMA. I called it N-methyl MDA at the time. And let me get my glasses so I can read here they are. Uh, 16 milligrams, that was in 1976. Actually, the first, first trial in that particular guise was on a, a train trip uh, going from here to Reno. There was a thing called the Fun Weekend, or the Fun Reno Train, and I went with my late wife and two very good friends, and we very often would take our own meals with us, and we'd eat on the train with the, 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 the fun of having a tablecloth and a candelabra, and and uh, locks and all the, the pleasures instead of a sandwich. And uh, not at all uncommon, we did then have a martini or an alcohol with, as a prelude to dinner. And I asked if they would mind if I tried it, the chemical in its place. Um, 25 milligrams, no effect. 40, no effect. 60 milligrams, no effect. 81 milligrams, is a, I got a plus one. Uh, 53 minutes, smooth shift into a light intoxication, distinct almost early alcohol-like intoxication. And I'd find that I would blend very nicely into the gregariousness, into the uh, disinhibition of the cocktail hour. So I looked upon it as a possible low-calorie martini, or no-calorie martini. Dr. Shulgin mentioned the drug's effects to a therapist friend. He and others were enthusiastic. They felt its ability to induce friendliness and empathy would be ideal for treating people with relationship problems. Dr. Shulgin believes thousands were given the drug, often by qualified practitioners, until it was banned in America in 1985. 